In this video, I explain the concept and procedure of within group fixed effects estimation. I'll also show how that relates to the least squares dummy variable approach, which I discussed in an earlier video. And for simplicity, I'm going to use both Excel and eViews for data analysis. Remember that the key issue in panel data modeling is how to resolve the problem of heterogeneity, which is when the firm dependent error term right here is correlated with one or more regressors. So in the within group estimation approach, to solve this problem, each variable is expressed as a deviation from its time mean, as I explained right here. The values here are said to be mean corrected or time mean or D mean because we subtract the mean of each variable from the individual values of that variable, as you can see across the board. And because the omega term, which is the um, heterogeneity term, is not time dependent, its value for each firm i is the same across time, so that the difference is zero. Mark you, the heterogeneity term is specific to a firm and is assumed to be constant across time for each firm. So as you can see, by subtracting the time mean from each variable, we effectively removed the heterogeneity term, as you can see here. And with the heterogeneity term out of the picture, we're now able to run OLS on the D-mean model under the assumption of weak heterogeneity. So using our empirical example where we regress market capitalization on capital expenditure and book value of equity. Our data set consists of 10 firms with 20 years of data providing us with uh, 200 observations. So this is our time mean model. I'm, I'm going to go real quick to Excel to show how that is. So this is the original data set right here. And now for each of these firms from 1 to, if I scroll down, you can see there are 10 firms in all right so for each of these 10 firms and over the period 2001 to 2020 I calculated their time means right here so if I click just on one and hit F2 you can see the calculation right there and then I then uh, calculated the time mean values so that if I click right there and hit F2 you would see it's each observation minus the corresponding mean and that's what I did for the rest uh, the rest of the way and then you run regression on this guy right here with this as your dependent variable and that's the outputs on Excel I already showed Excel regression in earlier videos but importantly observe that these coefficients are, are identical to what we obtained when we ran the least squares dummy variable model now, in running this regression, you should set the constants to zero, but you don't really have to do that because, ha, you know, I think it's still going to come out to be the same. And for good measure, we do the same on eViews. Right here, with um, my time main data already represented, right, so this is my dependent variable the D mean value of market capitalization holding down the control key I click on the D mean uh, capital expenditure and D mean book value of equity and then right click on any of them and open as equation and then run it right and that's the output right which you see the uh, coefficients correctly right here and of course you can see this kind of constants here comes out to be pretty much zero all right Let's go ahead and summarize all of this on my PowerPoint, you know, starting right here. So this is the output on Excel. And going forward, this is the operation on eViews with the output that you just saw right there. And now the question is, how do we regain our intercepts? Now, working from the D mean model right here, if we solve for Y and express the mean equation, the mean equation, of course, will show that the mean of the idiosyncratic term is zero and simplifying you find 
that there are three sets of constants here. The mean of y, this coefficient multiplied by the mean of x1, and this coefficient multiplied by the mean of x2 for this three variable model. So bringing all the constants together, as you can see right here, we do have our intercept. So we know that our intercept is this expression right here, which for our empirical example would be the mean values of the dependent variable minus the product of each coefficient and the respective regressor. So with that, these are the mean values for each of the variables. And then, as I showed in an earlier video, and following the same procedure, I calculate the uh, intercepts using this definition which we already determined. And so these come out to be the intercepts for each of the 10 firms, the average of which is 804.98. Now, remember this value, which is exactly what you would get as the average intercept when you run fixed effects least squares dummy variable model using the panel data option on Excel. And so, in conclusion, we find that both fixed effects least squares dummy variable and fixed, eff uh, fixed effects within group methods give identical slope because the two models are really mathematically the same. Now, unfortunately, and we must mention this, mean correction has a knock-on effect on the use of time-invariant variables because for such variables, as you might imagine, the difference between the value and the mean is going to be zero since the variables remain the same across time in terms of their values. Examples of such time-invariant variables that may pop up in your study could include the rank of, a, of the subject, ID, number, board size, experience, gender, etc. And also finally, differencing tends to remove long-run effects in the data, leaving only short-run dynamics, as you might suspect from learning any amount of time series regression. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please stay tuned for the next video.